what is it to coexist? What is it to believe that this is some sort of truth or reality or something to strive for, move towards, promote, make an effort to be and participate in coexist coexistence with what it's very much a <clears throat> ideology of acceptance it's not really a ideology of cohesion or harmony or unity but rather acceptance tolerance of differences making differences equal somehow but that's contradictory if something is different by definition it is not equivalent to that which it is different from this is not the topic of what I'm going to address today but it very much is part of it And uh, I just wanted to read uh, a couple passage passages from Second Corinthians eleven. This is Paul speaking. I am afraid, however, that just as Eve was deceived by the serpent's cunning, your minds may be led astray from from your simple and pure devotion to Christ. For, if he that cometh preaches another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if ye receive another spirit, which ye have not received, or another gospel, which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with him. I see this as a warning from Paul to the Corinthians that he was concerned that they would be easily accepting of another person coming in and preaching another Jesus, another gospel, um, accepting or receiving another spirit other than the one that they had already received, going astray. In other words, then in Galatians. <clears throat> but though we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. These are pretty strong words. Very strong warnings. And with reason. It is not a light thing to stray from that which you have been given in truth by Jesus himself. So again, right, there would be people that would pervert, distort the gospel of Christ. Now, Since most people are connected online, most people are exposed or are have access to learning about what other people say about the Bible at the tip of their fingers, right? You can easily get by by not even picking up a Bible yourself and reading it and instead going online and listening to other people talk about what the Bible says. So that is why some years ago, not too long ago, I began to read 
what the Bible says. And that was the beginning of a whole unraveling of events that would come to pass. Nothing that I could have ever planned for myself or even thought possible or even imagined would be the case if someone had asked me what would be of my understanding at this point in time. So who are the people that are on blast uh, according to the algorithm and according to the um, interest of those who would be exposed or those who hey guys it's Chris how you doing to, um, learn about the Bible well if you'd be correct to say that there's probably a few channels that are the ones that have gained traction and those people would probably claim that it is by the grace of God that they have such pl platforms and okay the point of this recording is not to dispute their claims about their own platforms but rather to ask some questions of what is going on so you have people like this um, man, Mr. Lasala, who has been apparently um, online several years. He was one of the originals, apparently, to begin online ministries. Okay. His main... Uh, or his main orbiting theme, I would say, and probably he himself as well, would be that it's a deliverance ministry. BDS is his ministry's name. Believer's Deliverance. Um, service or something like that. I... I looked it up once. It's a, str it's a strange name. BDS? Anyway. I saw him in an interview with... Um, he was in a panel talking to some transgender uh, women. So males to females. And they made fun of him because they're like, Oh, you just need an M at the end of your... Min uh, <laughs> name and it means something completely different bdsm and they laughed and they laughed and they laughed and he pretended like he didn't know what they were talking about anyway chris mr chris and the phoenix the way i came across him was um through somebody else's channel because he came on stream and um, started, you know, presenting his character. It was a few years ago when I, at the time, I was listening to um, David Lynn and Dore Love. Since then, I no longer... Um, have the same perspectives as I, as I did then and I've talked about some concerns regarding those individuals but nonetheless today's topic is about him and the orbiting or the surrounding characters and supposed ministries around him as well and they all seem to be interwo interwove interweaved, <laughs> interwoven together in, with um, the ultimate um, gain, respect of persons because of gain, 
They seem to um, have each other's backs despite there being differences in their supposed doctrine. And of course, they'll make the claims that, oh, it's not a salvation issue, this or the other. We're all still brothers in Christ. So very much promoters of some sort of coexistence. Though it could easy, easily be dis dis discerned that um, it's not necessarily the same Jesus. I will read a couple verses as well because if these gentlemen claim to believe what Jesus says or what the Word of God says, instead of debating over whether deliverance is doctrinally sound, biblically sound, or if the Trinity or the dualism or that the father and the son were forever eternal backwards and forwards and all these other things they have their place but there are other things that or there is the one thing that is pretty hard to not look at and it would be the eminence the urgency of the gospel in concern in concern to the return of Christ or the day of the Lord when he would come in the clouds as is described. So James 5, right? Verse 7. Be patient therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husbandman waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth and hath long patience has hath long patience for it until he receives the early and latter rain be ye also patient establish your hearts for the coming of the lord draweth nigh so of course we reading it um in the assumed to be correct 2,000 years after the fact, we can read ourselves into this and saying, oh, it is speaking to us. The Lord draweth nigh. Surely the day of the Lord is nigh. Well, we also have to consider primarily that these words were uttered to peoples 2,000 years ago. So it is said. So the urgency that they received this message for is evident. Grudge not one another, brethren, lest ye be condemned. Behold, the judge standeth before the door. You don't say, if somebody is at the door, say, at your house, you don't then assume that they'll take, you know, thousands of years to knock at your door for example if they're already at your door that means they're about to come in would it not be the case okay so passages like this in the new testament especially are all over the place i'm just highlighting a couple romans 1 16 <clears throat> For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. Amen. Uh, where was the other? This one is, yeah. And do this, understanding the occasion. The hour has come for you to wake up from your slumber. For our salvation is nearer now than when we believed first. 
The night is nearly over, the day has drawn near. So let us lay aside the deeds of darkness and put on the armor of light. This is um, language that is packed with urgency and this sense of, um, yeah, sense of urgency that it, that it is nigh, that it is close, that therefore put on the armor and be faithful. To put on, ar on the armor was that they were laboring the will of God, right? They were um, servants of the Lord, doing the will of the God in the flesh through the Spirit. And they l love not their lives unto death. Because their, their bodies dying did not matter, because they had life everlasting. Knowing that the time that now is high time to wake out of sleep, for now is our salvation near than when we believed. How is it near then that than when they began to believe? They knew that they their salvation and remember the day of the Lord is when he would return with um all the saints, all the angels from heaven. And the first resurrection would take place. I believe that there was a judgment to the nation of Israel. And Israel, I mean all, all the 12 tribes. Not just the northern kingdom or the southern kingdom, but all Israel including those who had already died or fallen asleep before Christ came. So all of Israel backwards would be judged. And then there is a final white throne judgment as described in Revelation 20. So what happens when the day of the Lord comes and the millennium reign begins? And what happens after the thousand-year reign of Christ and his saints and when Satan is released? Well, Satan goes out and deceives the nations as described in Revelation 20. And that to me stood out like a sore thumb when I was reading the Bible and the description of that because it is very I had I had never heard of Christians talk about the millennium reign or what happens after or what that would look like what the Bible describes as Satan deceiving the nations after the thousand year reign of Christ and his saints would look like but of course, what do we see around ourselves? What do we see around in the world today, if not deception? Often it is accredited to secret societies, shadow government, conspiracy this, conspiracy that. But ultimately there is the head orchestrator of said deception. Well, I believe it is Satan, just like the Bible says. Satan has gone out to deceive the nations. So while these platforms of so-called Christians are relentlessly doing live streams. Good and, afternoon, brothers um, and sisters. This is your brother Chris continually having, I'm here with you know, debates. And reviews of this and the other. What are they saying? 
And who is backing them? So, again, all these channels are very um, established, right? And, you know, they would say, well, it's 2023. You know, you have to look uh, professional. You have to have your nice intro. You have to have some, um, you have to talk with, you know, enticing words. You have to entertain your audience. You have to. You know, you can, you can, you can do whatever you want, but ultimately it has to be for Christ and this and the other. Well, that can only go so far. I mean, th there's production behind all this, okay? So what, what, what is the, what is this all for? There's people um, promoting to live under the law. Um, that the law never went away. That, in fact, the law of Christ I mean, is put it on um, what the is it? law of Moses. Right? What was that? Uh, oh, of course, everything restarted. called he should not become circumcised circumcision is nothing and uncircumcision is nothing keeping god's commandments is what counts there you go though that, like how do you read that keeping keeping god's commandments is what counts see he literally ends the conversation by because again i i feel like the well what are the commandments hang all the law and the prophets on two of them love the lord thy god and love your neighbor the, the ones that hang on them though but if you if you do those two, you've automatically look at, look at done all smug, the other ones. The, the, the smug uh, little grin says a lot. Including Sabbath. You haven't, brother. Including have Sabbath, Sean. Just like in if I were to if if I were just like Yeshua tells the man in Matthew 19, that's a that's a Torah command he gave the guy, which was if you have right. an abundance, you sell some of your abundance and you give to the poor. So the the argument goes a little bit like this. Everything that Jesus said um, is you can make a parallel to something that was said in the Old Testament. And therefore he says, aha, it is the Old Covenant. So just because Jesus says it in the New Testament, and we can read it in the New Testament, then this guy, and, and this guy says, oh, well, it was previously said in the Old Testament, in Leviticus, or in Deuteronomy, in Exodus, and da, da, da. So therefore, it's still, it's still the law of God. And this guy's like, no, 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 it's the law of Christ. And he's like, nope. The Old Testament. Okay. So the back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And all the while ignoring the judge standeth at the door. Our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. The blood of the prophets shall be required of this generation this generation shall not pass till these things be fulfilled those standing here will not taste death there are some of there are some of you standing here who will shall not taste death okay and and there's many 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 more once you l b read the word of god with those eyes to understand that we can't necessarily read ourselves into it or just glaze over the urgency or the um, the exclamatory aspects of what the Bible says in regards to how close this actually was. So from the time that Jesus resurrected to the destruction of the temple was approximately 40 years. So within those 40 years, 
the gospel was being preached, not only in Jerusalem, but Samaria, and to the ends of the world, to the ends of the earth. Amen. So whatever the Catholics take credit credit for in spreading the gospel, that already happened in the first century. So uh, this this man over here says that the law of Christ is merely just taken from the Old Testament. So he imports it into the New Testament and he's like, aha, the sacrifice of Christ doesn't necessarily mean anything because it just, he was a sacrifice, yes, but he still has to keep sacrificing. Instead of saying, well, the blood of Christ changed, brought in the new covenant with the better promises. Just like Isaac came about through a promise. And Abraham was given the promise that through Isaac, the seed would come, meaning Christ, by which salva salvation would be established. Redemption. So Christ's blood did pay for and marked the beginning of the new covenant, just as when Moses was given the law. And then a uh, sacrifice, a blood sacrifice was made to establish, right, and sprinkled and over Israel or o over the oath. So without getting into the details of what these gentlemen go into, because it's not the point of the recording. The recording I'm doing right now is to point out, or rather ask, who are these individuals? What are they doing? Because they seem to be very into, very zealous for the Word of God, yet at the same time, even though they claim they're zealous for the Word of God, why are all these people, right? Look at this panel, right? And there's constantly like a revolving kind of door of, of people that come in, come out, but then there's like the, the the key players, right? Like this man who would probably be the science head, the, you know, numbers, cause, um, astrophysics, this and the other. And this man says, like, oh, we're here. We're the new bloods. We're the new face of Christendom. The new face of this coexistent theology. And even though they come across as being against um, other religions in the sense that, well, they would say that they're false religions, they still platform one another. They still give each other pats on the back. They still very much... Um, play together and the reason why I am asking who the are these Phoenix individuals is, is because it's almost like hidden in plain sight who they are and what I mean by that is this so Mr. LaSala has videos about the apparent signs of the devil right and he's talking about the this phoenix. This is basically the bird of ancient Egyptian Satan. And so he's talking about the uh, um, the occult, the, si the symbols, right? Going into what they mean, how they're what they're found in Babylon, this and the other, Egypt, and then he says how they're found in um, modern day uh, propaganda, imagery, movies, books. All right. Um public events, sporting events, um, crop cervicals even. But then you come across things like this. Okay, so Sonic the Hedgehog, right? 
Masonic, right? I've seen other memes saying, oh, Masonic. So you got the, let's, let's just hear what Mr. LaSala says about this. Stars in a circle. This next picture is, uh, is Sonic the Hedgehog. You could see there, um, again, you have satanic stars in a circle. And again, you have phoenix wings. And, guys, this is probably on a thousand video games. Your kids are looking at this junk all day long. Um, if you notice, Sonic has the same eyes and mouth area that looks like Mickey Mouse. I believe there's a subliminal message in the way that they made you know, the eyes and the mouth and, and everything on Sonic and Mickey Mouse, because I don't know why they always do it in that same way, where the eyes are, are like white and they're hooked into the mouth. But I haven't really been, fi I haven't figured out yet what they're trying to do with that. So, I'm just assuming they're hiding subliminal images into these creatures, but... I'll let okay, so... He to him he included it as a you know satanic mess uh symbol that it's affecting you subliminally and that it's associated with the phoenix right this other video part seven he talks about the angel wings right so very similar to what we saw previously like in the sonic video or the sonic depiction the two the two wings right so um same with the angel wings right according to mr lasala it's the the way um lucifer um depicts himself he sees himself as an angel and not like a beast like a reptilian beast uh, so interesting right because People watch that and they're like, oh, yeah, you know, let's let's not let our, our children watch this or let's not let or let's just be wary of how um, the world is very much trading in these images, um, loving these images, formalizing identity, saying, oh, when I was a kid, I used to play. I love that character or this. I am that character. They dress up like this. They buy toys you like this or whatever or uh, or music right um oh i listened to that or oh i read that book when i was a teenager oh but this or the other i love ancient history this wow 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 crop circles amazing oh i love this oh he's so handsome this and that and this so that being said who is this character? And what is that? What is that? And so, can anybody explain that? And if anybody just says, oh, that's just, um, that's just his Jiminy Cricket. It's his conscience on his left shoulder. It was whispering to him. It gives him guidance. Other people will say, oh, well, there's nothing. He just likes toys. Leave him alone. He just likes Dragon Ball. And he likes Masonic the Hedgehog. Okay. Well, you say, well, what's that got to do with Mr. Lasala? Um... Well, Mr. Lasala is and is and does collaborations with that individual. There I it is. Make a video and show people. And people how are and people are going to watch my content and see that you have yeah. no clue what you're talking about. No, they're not. So yeah, no, they are. Not. Because if you actually define the words, you think that I, you know, so this is where it it got kind of heated. Up, just they're they're appearing appearing to be nasty one with the other. Like, oh, I'm gonna make an exposed video with you, and he's like, sure. He's like, people are gonna see it and, and realize that you have no idea what you're talking about. 
And this guy's like, yes, yes, yes. And of course, you have little Masonic, the hedgehog, back there just, just watching. And nobody says anything. Not him, who made a video apparently exposing Masonic the Hedgehog for a satanic puppet and a satanic symbol and a satanic influence on your children. But when it comes to JP and, and his audience and all these other panelists, he's like, nope, it doesn't matter. We're good. We have demons in our flesh. So, hey, what's another one going to do? Nothing. Let's just allow it to be part of it. Let's just, just let's just allow it to be part of us. Don't worry, guys. It'll all be okay. What are what are they doing? What are they doing? And of course, there's Mister Masonic the Hedgehog again. And it's not like Mister Lasala can't see it. He's very well aware. So where is his open rebuke of JP? Where is his, at the very least, where is his correction to this young man and saying, hey, have you not watched my video on my, on the devil's signs? Part six? Do you not know my video, devil part, the devil's signs part six, where I go over how Masonic the Hedgehog is satanic? So you'll never see that. And why? Well, I think you can answer that for yourselves. So everyone is responsible to reading the Word of God themselves and not letting others tell you what the Word of God says. Let us not be deceived. What times are we living in? Is it not strange that the whole body of supposed Christendom is living as though God didn't mean what he said when the judge standeth at the door and that God didn't mean that the day of the Lord is at hand? Did he not mean when he said, the blood of the prophets shall be required of this generation when he was rebuking the Pharisees and the scribes and the lawyers. He was telling them, listen, everything that I'm telling you is going to be required of this generation. They would not ex escape. Just like John the Baptist said to the Pharisees, do you not think, do you think you can escape the wrath that is to come just because you're coming to get baptized? Or do you just want to get baptized to escape the wrath that is already appointed for you to receive? What is going on? It's it's pretty amazing. It's pretty jaw-dropping to see how an individual can have so much supposed um, zeal and um, contempt or zeal to toward God and contempt for things evil. But then when it's in front of you, and, and especially when you're in a platform like this, in a, pla in a public platform, and you say nothing. Nothing is said. And right here, this um, this individual, too, is another one of these um, panelists, one of these influencers, one of these content creators. They're talking about, you know, if... Uh, Muslims can be saved. This guy, you can watch it for yourself, but it's, it you know, the chapters are described here. Islam and salvation, right? He says, I I don't want to believe in a God or I think that God would be evil if he sends if he sends people to hell who did not hear the gospel in their lifetime. Does he not remember um Acts nineteen? Is it Acts nineteen? Let's take a look. 
it's either Ox 19 or Ox 17. Oh, yeah, I think it's then 17. Let's take a look. Hmm. Well, it's the part where um, that God places every man, you know, on the earth that they might find him. Let's see if that, if that pops up. Oh, yeah, it was <laughs> uh, Act 17. I just overlooked it. So it is um, right here. From one man he made every nation of men that they should inhabit the whole earth, and he determined their appointed times and their boundaries of their land. God intended that they should seek him and perhaps reach out to him and find him, though he is not far from each one of us. So Don was saying, um, I don't, I think it's an evil God if he sends people to hell for not having heard the gospel and he was saying well you know i believe that every person in their lifetime will either be illuminated that their own belief system is wrong and therefore will be judged if they reject that inclination to um, seek further into that and lean into that and find god that way and that they would be judged according to that light that they received and he's like no no no, man I, I i believe that even if a if you're muslim and you die that perhaps you will be saved because hey who i'm not god i can't say who's saved and who's not because muslims believe in jesus so this man believes that muslims believe in jesus no 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 they believe in a Jesus. They don't believe in Jesus, the Son of God. They believe in Jesus, the prophet. So, just more confusion, more confusion. And of course, little Masonic, the hedgehog, is overseeing it all. Over the globe earth. And everything's okay. So it's very mixed signals, mixed signals everywhere. And why you would have a platform that invites all type of doctrine is just amazing. How much more they they might as well just put this as their logo. Because that's truly what it is. Because when this man Okay, so after this man had this debate with this other man, this man, Mr. Lasala, decided to make an an expose video. And 
he ends off saying, um, you don't understand the Old Testament. No, you don't understand the Old or New Testament. Or on. I'm just tired of you using other people's platforms to spread your cult doctrine that doesn't exist anywhere in church history. And as a brother who loves people, I don't want them promoting your garbage all over the internet. Let it be known. If anyone has Sean Griffin on their channel, I will never go on their channel again. Because anyone who's dumb enough to have someone that denies the blood of Jesus Christ on their channel is a fool, and anyone that gives this guy a platform is a fool because he loves attention. He loves seeing his name in the lights. He wants to spread this cult doctrine around. He wants. So by making this exposed video, like he's almost like giving a platform <laughs> for him. So people are like, oh, I'm going to go check him out. So he's apparently calling out people, but why did he even go into why did he go onto that man's channel and debate him if does that make him a fool for having gone and to that this man's platform right you should not and you know uh did he not know can he claim ignorance for not knowing i mean this man has has a ministry that's years years old several years old did he not know that this man denies the blood of christ because he still wants to live under the law of moses because he claims that the law of moses still is the law of christ so okay but he did say mr lasala did say that anyone who has sean griffin on their platform is a fool he would never go on that person's platform ever again but wait a second. JP had the, that individual on his stream. That person, JP, had Sean on their stream. he even puts them on he's like okay guys i'll let you guys both d debate jp was more than happy to have these two people go at it on his stream because it gets people to his channel so after they you know do the whole shebang then all of a sudden that video disappears because this video is on kingdom in context's channel jp has since scrubbed that interview or that panel discussion or whatever you want to call it that debate from his channel or at least i don't see it so mr lasala probably um talked to him and said hey you better take that down because you don't want to make me look like a fool if I go on your channel and you still have Mr. Griffin's uh, content on your channel. And they're probably like, yep, okay, no problem. I'll take it down. So we can continue our supposed coexistence and promote other stuff. Because this guy's like, hey, man, I can have many people who don't agree with what I believe, but I still consider them brothers in Christ. So they get to decide what that means. They get to decide who to consider brothers in Christ, and they get to decide who or or what is a salvific issue. Because he's like, oh, I believe in the Trinity, but LaSalle doesn't, so um, we're still brothers in Christ. So I guess somebody who believes in the three persons and one is believes in the same Jesus that this man, for example, right? Where he's like, no, 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 there's a literal, literal son and a literal father. And the son comes from the father by the power of the spirit, et cetera, et cetera. He's like, that's the um, 
anti-Nicene belief of the church fathers and this and the other. And I have this articulation and you have that articulation and ba this and that and the other. And hey, you guys believe in a globe earth. I believe in a flat stationary cos cosmology and this and the other. It's okay. We're all brothers in Christ. What is going on? <laughs> By definition, they're they're different gospels. They're different um, beliefs of what God actually says. Is it not important whether one believes the description of what man says your cosmology is, your reality is, opposed to what God says it is? Does it does it not matter? When God said the urgency and the application of the urgency of his of his word and what his son declared to that generation. Or does it matter more our interpretation and be like, oh, no, 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 no. It, it applies to our generation today. Two thousand years later. Because shouldn't it be, well, what constitutes a saint? And what is the rest of the dead lived not until the thousand years were finished? Who are the dead? Who are the rest of the dead? What is it to live again? Is it because we have the ability to be born again? That we be dead in the body because of sin, but alive because of Christ, who reigneth forevermore? What is Satan doing? What is the surrounding and encompassing about the camp of the saints and the beloved city? Gog and Magog, the dualistic mind, pitting one, right? The Hegelian dialect, the, the red and the blue. You see constantly in these channels, right? The red and the blue. They have red. This JP character has Sonic some streams as blue and the other streams he has the other little the other little um sonic character masonic character but it's red so he has the blue and the red and again these people have the blue lighting and then sometimes they have the red lighting coincidence i think not i think not so be weary be not deceived. Read the Bible. Ask, ask the Father for clarity, understanding. Hey guys, it's Chris. How you doing? Face painting this video's and all clowns be signs no of the are, devil are demonically seven. inspired. Other this is why you Jesus have jesters dressed. Preached. There's no other Jesus other than the Jesus preached in the Word of God. There's no other foundation but that which is laid, who is Jesus Christ. And there is truth in the promise. He literally does take you from dark into light. There is victory from all unrighteousness. You can overcome that which convinces you at times when you did not know the true hope there is victory over that darkness we do not have to continue living in sin because Christ lifts us up he is the strength he is our fortress in times of trouble Let us not have a hard and unrepentant heart that only stores up wrath. Instead, let us humble ourselves before the Lord who liveth forever. Let us not stray away down the path of uh, believing in a Jesus that's convenient to us right because we rather believe in a jesus who is just some sort of symbolic 
reference to whatever we want to conjure up in our minds of what is convenient for us to believe and not get in the way of what we want in this life. It will be interesting to see if when these people have to acknowledge what the Bible says instead of having long drawn out live streams six plus hours of just what exactly what are they doing Is it not an urgent matter to adhere to what has already been declared? Adhere to what has been fulfilled? Adhere to that which is accessible to every man who leaneth into, who seeketh the Lord, who seeketh that which is calling him, for they hear his voice. And not the voice of a false prophet, a false shepherd. Let us awake from our stupor. For our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. Surely that applies to us today, but it was first spoken to them then. Amen.